Hey you, welcome home to Mailer's Landing. I'm Sue and we're here in Growing Zone 6B in New England and it is just magnificent out here. We're just about to walk into June and my goodness, come see, come see. I have so many favorites, um, but this front walk, this cat mint has absolutely taken over. I just love it. We'll trim it at some point um, once these blooms have faded and gotten pollinated and stuff. And then we'll have a second bloom in September-ish. I have, I have plans for this stuff. Hang tight with me. So we've been moving things around a little bit. Put a bench here and I believe we're going to put a sundial right in the middle there. Got my sweet potatoes start sunning themselves for a little while. I think they're doing a three or four hour hardening off today. I'm sharing the shade with these grapevines over here. It is steadily warming up and I think this is gonna be my only time to film this for you before it gets really, really hot this afternoon. Um, so first things first, check out these grapes. You all, I think, I think these are gonna fruit this year. I think that's what's going on here. They had yet to flower for us, and fruit, I guess. Um, ask me what kind of grapes I think they are. Go ahead, ask me what kind of grapes these are, cause I couldn't, I could not tell you what kind of grapes these are. Little sister. They're tractor supply grapes. That's what kind of grapes they are. They came in a long skinny box. I have been known to plant some questionable business. So this is the current state of affairs here in the garden. I still have some stuff hanging out uh, that I need to prepare spaces for particularly. These tomatillos actually have a whole bunch more in the bucket, so I'm waiting on them. I'm trying real hard to get the timing right. Look at this radish shouldering. That's a good radish. That's a really good radish. Mm. I'm seeking retreat in the shade garden. Come on with me. This is so much better. I crawled under here and the temp dropped like five degrees. So good. So I got a couple of these really cute chairs from a friend who was trying to divest herself of them um, and set them out here. I'm making an effort right now to make spaces where one can sit. In this season in my life, it's becoming important to me on a variety of levels to have seating spaces in my garden. The garden is restorative on so very many levels, and one of those is the restoration of getting your hands dirty, and another of those is the restoration of having a place to relax. So I'm trying to make spaces where I can sit down and kind of enjoy what's happening here. And at the same time, my mom is aging, and she likes to enjoy the garden too, so Initially, I was like, oh, put in benches for mama. Uh, but really, it's, it's for both of us. It's for all of us. So you probably remember this spot from where Alan and Katie got married, right there in September. Um, so we had done a lot of really fast landscaping in July last year to try and get ready. And it's all coming back I, I've got to say threefold, fivefold. This is so very appealing. Um, I've started a little medicinal garden over here. This is the newest golden seal, so I've got three golden seal, a couple of bloodroot, and you can see may apple over there. These are some um, Siberian ginseng plants. And of course, that lovely trillium. This is called a European ginger. It may blossom. I don't actually know what these are, these little plants. But really, I just tried to buy one in every color. Aren't these just spectacular? They look like little creatures. 
Um, so most of these are spent right now, you can see, but there's a yellow and one of them's yellow and white and purple and one of them's pink and they're just so pretty. A lot of hosta and hosta adjacent plants. Lily of the Valley. It smells so good. I wish you could smell that. So my shade garden is coming along. I'm so pleased with it. Hello, Blossom. Also, this, my friend, this is an asparagus that is taller than me. Okay, so last year, last year, when I started plants, I started them under lights downstairs. I love asparagus. There used to be a lady who lived across the street from me when I was a kid who had these two Shelties and she kept an asparagus patch for the Shelties, basically. They loved asparagus. So anyway, I started seeds last year under light and I had these asparagus come up and I was really proud of myself, right? Um, and then I pretty much left them on the steps of the greenhouse all summer long. I stuck them in the bin later and they came back. Okay, I'm editing this mess and um, that story had nothing to do with the rogue asparagus that's growing up in the middle of the raspberry patch. I had planted them there at some point and then forgot about them and it, dude, they're back. Hey. I'm letting it go to fern and seed. Meanwhile, there's dock that has to be pulled, but I'm not the person for that job, as was proved to me in the back a couple of days ago, so I will need assistance. In our trimmings, I found an Egyptian mulberry that I planted like three years ago and probably hacked every year after that. So I'm kind of pleased about finding that and bringing her back to life. These bushes are absolutely loaded with flowers and buds. All that pruning that we did at the end of the year is absolutely paying off. We are just loaded. Most of these were here when we got here. Um, they were covered up by a tarp and years of midden. Oh, and here's a, a bench that we had commissioned. It's really simple, but it's uh, it was from a local guy using local wood um, and his little mobile sawmill. Just love this. Bill's gonna finish it in linseed oil this week. Birds are staying in the shade. How are the kids, you ask? Everybody's doing really well. Lyric is officially four weeks old. And we're gonna start kid sharing soon with, with her and do some milking. But there's training to happen first. So according to some sources, I'm late to the, the game on the, hello, drummers down here checking me out. Um, according to a handful of sources, I am late in the game, starting kid sharing at a month, where some other sources are saying, oh, that's perfect, start it now. Um, we are gonna start training this week and hopefully be milking by next week. We are not going to separate mom and baby overnight. Um, just our situation doesn't really make it convenient, perhaps even doable. We're going to have to get creative about this whole thing. We may be moving the stanchion outside of the pen to facilitate that, but we'll, we'll have to see. Bill and I are going to talk about it this evening. We've got a really simple build going on here. And to move the... To move the stanchion out would be easier for us to do milking. I will, though, definitely have to replace it with something else elevated because the girls just love to be on that thing. What I mean to tell you is that auntie and niece are getting along much better now. So back in here, Lib built a new roof for the woodshed. Kick-ass job, right? Um, and this is a bed that I need to prep. So 
I'm going to put some specific things in here. These raspberries that we pruned up and uncovered just this last November, they look pretty good. I am going to say these probably will blossom later. Um, maybe they're September bearing canes. So I'm just kind of keeping an eye on them. Meanwhile, the fig ain't looking so good. My, uh, my fig decimation appears to be continuing on. This one's dead. This one's hanging on there, but just barely. Practically the entire understory is this garlic mustard, which is fine. I just keep pulling it as it gets tall and feeding it to the birds. So this is a favorite area too. This is a fairy arch. So another thing I'm trying to do here is kind of create a feeling of portals. Um, I want to hang some bells out here this summer too. Garlic mustard. We've got hops growing on this. These are third year vines coming up. Uh, last year it fruited a little bit, so we'll see. This is really, really shady back here. Look at that. This lily of the valley are coming up just beautifully. We've got a jack in the pulpit here. Uh, they are showing up all over. They're in with the Creeping Jenny, which is forming this fantastic pathway. Oh, it's so green and delicious. Bill and Lib have very recently cleared this space to give us some better access down to the trail that he cut, which this is actually, oh, I see. This is where the water winds up. I have this dream that we'll get a nice wet summer and I can put in some kind of water garden. But for now, it's mostly skunk cabbage and drift roses and knotweed. So Bill ran over this knotweed with a mower and we've got this garlic mustard coming in. And every place that we've had that happen, it just supplants the knotweed over time. I may wind up moving some of the Creeping Jenny um, down here because it's starting. Okay, so this understory, that's all garlic mustard. Garlic mustard, garlic mustard, garlic mustard. Boom, Creeping Jenny. So I think, and you can see it's, it's everywhere. It's this lush, thick carpet. So I think maybe if I can introduce it down there, maybe it'll take root. There's another Jack in the Pulpit in the Jenny. So thanks for hanging out with me today while we did the video equivalent of exploring to find the cool side of the pillow. Thanks for hanging out with me today in the shade, keeping cool and beating the heat. I will catch you up soon. Take care. There are also tractor supply grapes on the side of the porch. Tractor supply, as well as tractor supply raspberries. Tractor supply. Tractor supply. Tractor supply.